verse 1 of chapter 7 says, <clears throat> when, when I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was uncovered. For instance, when Yahushua came and he began to heal Israel, then some of them raised up against him and killed him. And then that is represented or even representing what would happen in history when people would claim to believe in him and would go to church and everything not understanding that what they are receiving in those churches in those doctrines is a false doctrine and therefore they are following a false messiah not knowing so when I would have healed Israel then the iniquity of Ephraim was uncovered when the last comes to heal because he received the power through Mashiach the first then Ephraim who are the many will show their iniquity when they reject the doctrine that they claim to believe in when they reject the messiah that they claim to worship they will kill the two witnesses and that will reveal their iniquity when i would have healed israel then the iniquity of ephraim was uncovered and the wickedness of samaria for they have committed fraud samaria like um, shomrom in hebrew those uh who guard which represents in the meaning of the word those who claim to guard the Torah yet don't and in the sense of what that town was uh, represents the Israelites who have mingled with the Gentiles so pretty much the many once again because within the many many are from Ephraim some are from the rest of the tribes of Israel and others are from different nations. And the wickedness of Samaria for they have committed fraud. A thief comes in. A band of robbers takes spoil outside. As we know the actual thief is Satan. So that would be how the abomination of desolation will enter in take spoil on this earth after destroying the whole thing and establishing its kingdom for just 42 months but <clears throat> uh, we know that the last comes as a thief in the night also so for they have committed fraud a thief comes in a band of robbers takes spoil outside they do not consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Those who steal, those who hurt others, really do not understand that Yahweh is really seeing everything, taking note even of every word. They do not consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. And also, a thief comes in, a band of robbers takes Paul outside, is to show that there won't be salvation inside nor outside of the city, meaning um, sword in the city, hunger outside. The second and third seal is what that represents. A thief comes in, so people come out, and when they come out, they find a bunch of robbers just waiting to take spoil. A thief comes in, a band of robbers takes spoil outside. They do not consider in their hearts that I remember all the wickedness. Now, their own deeds have surrounded them. As what people in the world call karma. What goes around comes around. And when they do so many things, it surrounds them. Now their own deeds have surrounded them, surrounded them. They are before my face. Because everything that we have done is before his face in the sense of uh, he knows all things. And when it comes to those who believe in Mashiach, he has gotten rid, rid of all the wrong things that we have done. So those things are not before his face. 
even though obviously he knows all things but he has decided to forgive those things and therefore not remember them now their own deeds have surrounded them they are before my face they make a king glad with their wickedness they make a king glad with their wickedness and princes with their lies I find it very interesting and I always repeat first of all I'm not a citizen of the well I don't repeat that but I'm not a citizen of the United States and I am not into politics at all but it is part of this world and it is part of even what we see in scriptures that will happen so my point is that when it comes to politics I hate it just like I hate businesses or doing business because of the fact that what I just said earlier people tend to lie most of the time when doing business and I really don't like that and on the other hand all politicians lie also to get everybody to like them and vote for them which is kind of the same thing that ends up happening in churches when people want or well, pastors want to fill up their churches their seats and they start speaking things like politicians just to get people so um that is hypocrisy that is the leaven of the pharisees that yahushua told us to be aware of and take care not to have it in us so in this verse that it says now their own deeds have surrounded them they make a king glad with their wickedness i find very interesting that um after saying everything that i just said um seeing what has happened in the united states with the elections it is very interesting how this verse applies they make a king glad with the wickedness just like they are making a precedent and are making him very glad through lying and fraud which they have committed and there is a lot of proof of it yet the media is saying the contrary so there is a lot of proof you just have to go and look for it and I urge you to do so if you think that the media is telling you the truth because all most 95% of uh, news media are saying that <clears throat> that there is no proof of fraud but anyways see how it says they make a king glad with their wickedness and princes with their lies they use like well there are proof of many dead people who voted meaning they use their names to place votes on their name um like in the in people of 120 years biden won like 100 percent all votes were for him it's amazing <laughs> um also they found that the software that they were using in most computers in many of the states for casting votes a software called dominion which with that name how can they not know and how can they use that name so blatantly i mean it's amazing it's called dominion and what the program has done is that when they place votes for trump the program would switch him for biden biden has become the president who has gotten more votes in the history of the united states meaning well in comparison and all of those things which is amazing because well it's impossible for many reasons for that to happen yet since there were so many votes for trump and they had to make biden get more votes then that record had to happen um and they also well yeah the program dominion which switches votes also the fraud with mailing vote and many other details that they have found with that and there is one state who actually did everything um, the old way counting by hand the votes and interestingly enough in that place the great majority of votes were for Trump and huge difference and that is the one that didn't use the software so it's very strange and actually this that i just said regarding the software was also shown in the simpsons 
like just like I just said it like a joke of course but it happened and all of those people that for four years were saying impeach Trump and and put him through the court and then after the court decided that there was nothing uh, from with Russia or the other things that they were blaming him for and they were saying we need to investigate we need to investigate now that there is all of this fraud they're saying there's nothing to investigate you shouldn't investigate there's no fraud nothing no ever in the presidency or in the elections can there be any fraud after four years of saying that there was fraud now they're saying that it's virtually impossible for fraud to happen in the elections so there you see the hypocrisy the leaven of the pharisees they make a king glad with the wickedness and princes with their lies and that is pretty much politics they are adulterers like an oven heated by a baker they are adulterers like an oven heated by a baker he ceases stirring the fire after kneading the dough until it is leaven <laughs> blessed be the most high how he does these things all the time how he confirms the whole explanation we see there the leaven of the Pharisees which is the hypocrisy that is in all these politicians that I was just mentioning and Yahweh just said it <clears throat> they are puffed up but it's only air there's no substance in them they are all adulterers like an oven heated by a baker he ceases stirring the fire after kneading the dough until it is leavened in the day of our king <clears throat> In the day of our king, princes have made him sick, inflamed him, inflamed with wine. He stretched out his hand with scoffers. In the day of our king, which um, can be interpreted in many ways, but pretty much in the seventh month is the month of the kings. And Yom Kippur is key. As we know is the day in which people will kill the two witnesses of which one is the king who will become the king of kings he comes as a prince when he's killed becomes the king of kings <clears throat> Yahushua came as the Kohen Gadol then first and last will become one and priest and kingdom will be as one in the day of our king prince have made him sick inflamed with wine he stretched out his hand with scuffers they prepare their heart like an oven while they lie in wait <clears throat> their baker sleeps all night in the morning it burns like a flaming fire they are all hot like an oven and have devoured their judges all their kings have fallen none among them calls calls upon me so we see how the kings who are the ones supposed to be calling on him the most for wisdom, knowledge, in order for them to judge correctly, they don't do it. Instead, they get <clears throat> uh, filled up with hypocrisy, with stubbornness, with, um, as we see here, they prepare their heart like an oven. So they are in heat so that's why they're also burning with lust for one another as those who fall in idolatry as Romans 1 says it end up in homosexuality for instance they prepare their heart like an oven while they lie in wait their baker sleeps all night which is also interesting because let me see there's a comment here their anger they say their anger in the Septuagint sleeps all night um, which could be interpreted as the fact that during the night they are thinking about all the evil that they will do the next day their anger um, sleeps all, at all night and also the fact that they write also their baker is to show how they bake their anger like in an oven so when they wake up they go and fulfill what they were thinking all night they prepare their heart like an oven while they lie in wait their baker sleeps all night also this connects with the story of Joseph when he was in jail and the baker and the wine um, the well the guy who made the wine 
the two were in jail and had a dream and then Joseph reveals the dream I have explained well other times that whole episode is very interesting the things that we can take from it and we see a connection here with Satan being as the baker baking a bunch of people who are like the Pharisees who are filled with leaven so also if we take it down one level the baker will be the pastor who is baking bread full of leaven when he teaches people a false doctrine and they end up acting like the Pharisees judging by appearances and stuff like that so he prepared their heart like an oven they prepared their heart like an oven while they lie in wait their baker sleeps all night in the morning it burns like a flaming fire they are all hot like an oven and have devoured their judges all their kings have fallen none among them calls upon him the one thing i didn't say regarding the verse 5 in the day of our king princes have made him sick one way that we could understand this is how when the day comes for the prince to become king which would be in Yom Kippur the witness like Moshe he will be set up in order for them to catch him and kill him catch him on Yom Teruah kill him on Yom Kippur 10 days later on the same seventh month so in the day of our king princes have made him sick inflamed with wine he stretched out his hand with scoffers and well obviously the literal is the fact that princes even though when they were trying to do right they had bad advisors around bad people who would turn them into what they are who would corrupt them so uh, that is the main thing but as I was saying the possibility of the interpretation of the day of our king being Yom Kippur when they killed the two witnesses after having uh, set him up in a way somehow so in the day of our king princes have made him sick and flamed with wine he stretched out his hand with scuffers they prepared their heart like an oven so yeah as I was saying the main thing is how a prince even when he is trying to do what's right but being young is controlled by those around him and then changed in order to be also corrupted like the rest of those leaders of the world so now verse 8 Ephraim has mixed himself among the peoples that's what I was saying a few verses back how it represents the many Ephraim has mixed himself among the peoples Ephraim is a cake unturned showing how the people are those who are being baked by the leaders who are being baked by Satan and that baker can be connected to what I just said in the story of Joseph when he was in jail Ephraim has mixed himself among the peoples Ephraim is a cake unturned a cake unturned is um, not good because it's burnt on one side and the other one is not cooked at all or just a little bit so that's how they are they are also that is like being lukewarm they not they are the two extremes cold nor hot they become lukewarm so they are vomited by um, Yahweh as it is written in Revelation 3 when he talks to Laodicea how he vomits those he vomits out of his mouth those who are lukewarm like the same representation with the unturned cake for some reasons they are they go to the extreme and they follow a bunch of commandments of men so they are burnt on the other things that are really important they really don't care so they are not cooked at all Ephraim is a cake unturned aliens have devoured his strength those mixed peoples those nations among which Ephraim um, was living and is still since the whole of Israel was scattered around the whole earth so Ephraim is a cake unturned 
aliens have devoured his strength, but he does not know it. That is amazing. There were a lot of Israelites on Amer on this land of America when the Spaniards came, and also when many Israelites were were sold in the United States as slaves after being bought in Africa when they were sold by the descendants of Cam. So some Israelites were taken to North America. Some of the Israelites from Sepharad in Spain were brought to the rest of America. But even when they were brought here, there were some here already. And there's proof of that. For instance, in New Mexico, they found a mountain with, where the Ten Commandments are found in Paleo-Hebrew and the name of Yahweh and other stones with Hebrew on them and dated to 500 years before Messiah. So that would mean that when Messiah came to earth, there were Israelites on America 500 years before that. So 500 years before that, Hebrews were on America and then Messiah came which is amazing for many reasons when those nations came as they also did when Babylon went to Israel and took them away captive the people were forced into believing a false doctrine but it was never as effective as it was 500 years ago because before that the people were so um well they were trying to do that programming of a false doctrine for instance the 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 greek empire they tried to force israel to turn to the greek beliefs and some did but others like the maccabees didn't didn't because the time from when they were taken captive or conquered until the Maccabees were able to take them away and destroy that, that idea of adopting Hellenism um, was a few years. So just one generation won't be enough for that change. So what they did is that in several generations, I repeat for about 500 years, they came and brought some of the Israelites and forced them to believe in their doctrine according to their belief of Jesus and Mary and, and God and all of that. Some claim that they turned or converted just to not be killed others converted not to be killed others were killed for not converting but after one generation two generations three generations the belief the teaching being in a nation where uh all around where catholic churches or false doctrines whatever christianity or catholicism however you want to call it um that made it so that after several generations we would grow up thinking that that is the doctrine that that is the true teaching that the falsehood is the truth so that's why it says aliens have devoured his strength our strength is messiah because we can do all things in messiah who strengthens us our strength is messiah but aliens People from other nations have taken our strength, have taken our Messiah, the true doctrine. Aliens have devoured his strength, but he does not know it. But the many, Ephraim, they don't know that they are in the false doctrine. And that's how Satan took away their strength. Because we are in a spiritual battle. So if Satan is able to take the strength away from the people, then they are going to lose in that battle. That is very important. So we can do all things in Mashiach who strengthens us. 
but they have taken away that strength but he doesn't know it Ephraim doesn't know the many don't know that they are following a false messiah a false doctrine because he has taken generations for that to stick and for them to actually believe that that is the true doctrine because they were born in it and their parents were born in it and their parents were born in it so we became a tradition in many instances tradition in many families is stronger than truth that's why Mashiach spoke of how we needed to reject what our parents gave us in order to really get what he came to give us so aliens have devoured his strength but he does not know it yes gray hairs are here and there on him yet he does not know it like um the fact that we are in the end times and therefore Ephraim is already old but he does not know it why because Ephraim the many think they are a new people they don't even know their identity because they call themselves Hispanic Latins African Americans or black black is a color is not an identity African American neither and if you research they were not really from Africa even though they were bought in Africa um, meaning they were not from Cam the son of Noah Latin people Latin is a language not a people Hispanic for speaking Spanish again a language not a people so people the many don't really know who they are they think they are new they were just they came out out of nowhere and they are a third world country or whatever wherever they may be they are from or they are the minority as they call us so they don't know that they actually have gray hairs and where they come from they don't know who they really are and how back in history our uh, identity goes Yes, gray hairs are here and there on him, yet he does not know it. Also, gray hairs represent wisdom. So it's like saying, even though they are old, they have not attained wisdom. And the pride of Israel testifies to his face. The pride that made Pharisees reject Messiah and kill him. Pride is part of the interpretation or meaning of leaven pride of Israel testifies to his face but they do not return to Yahweh their Elohim nor seek him for all of this the pride of Israel testifies to his face that is very interesting because Yahweh himself manifests as the witness to testify Israel claims to find pride in having the true Elohim who chose them. So their own pride, that which they claim to be proud of, would actually testify against them in their face, to their face, and they will not realize it. They will see him as a thief and kill him. The pride of Israel testifies to his face. But they do not return to, Yah to Yahweh their Elohim. So even though he manifests to testify to their face, they do not listen to him and do not want to go to Yahweh through the doctrine that is given by him. Instead, they go away. The pride of Israel testifies to his face, but they do not return to Yahweh their Elohim nor seek him for all this. Verse 10. Let me just see for a second the word pride there. Then verse 11 Ephraim also is like a silly dove remember that the Ruach came down came down as a dove but it, Ephraim is like a silly dove like I just said even though they should have the spirit because Yahweh already offered it and they have a little portion of it because of the testimony 
so a little portion of the spirit of prophecy they do not receive the knowledge of Yahweh nor the true wisdom which comes through Yahushua and therefore are actually silly even though they are doves Ephraim also is like a silly dove without sense without heart that is very interesting let me see if the heart is because of the literal yes without heart and that is very interesting I already said that the last comes from Ephraim the last will become the branch of David because Yahushua is the root of David so when we believe in Mashiach we become part of Yahudah that's why in ya in Yahushua there is no Greek no nor Yahudi we are all one Yahushua is one with the father we are one with him and he's a Yahudi so therefore we become Yahudim those who praise Yahweh because of what Yahushua did even though genetically we may come from another tribe so the last comes from Ephraim and becomes the branch of David as we see also prophesied in uh, Genesis 49 and many other parts of scriptures also Isaiah 11 Isaiah 9 and I say a bunch of other chapters so um, with our heart is interesting because we know that David had a heart like Yahweh David is a representation of the last Yahushua is the head of the congregation meaning he is the brain the last is the branch of David therefore the last is the heart like the few and the many first and the last the few are the body the last are the blood I mean the few are the body the many are the blood the first is the brain the last is the heart so that's why it says that Ephraim has no heart because they rejected the witness like Moshe who comes from them but they reject them they reject him who is their own brother just like it happened with Yahushua he came to his own and they rejected him that's why Yahushua was killed in Jerusalem which was mainly inhabited by the Yahudim the last comes within the nations where Ephraim is scattered and the last comes from Ephraim as the heart but they reject him so they lack a heart they have no sense and they are silly because they reject the actual Ruach the actual spirit Ephraim also is like a silly dove without sense without heart they called to Egypt meaning they called to the false prophet to the false doctrine they go to Ashur Assyria meaning they go to the first beast the world leader Sennacherib and Pharaoh they call to Egypt they go to Ashur look how it says call as in invoke the false name the false doctrine given by the false prophet they go to Ashur so they go to the government for help for salvation the world leader which will be the beast represented by Sennacherib the king of Ashur verse 12 wherever they go I will spread my net on them wherever they go I will spread my net on them there are several things to say here when it comes to the wicked Yahweh is saying no matter where they go trying to hide I will catch them when it comes to the fact that Yahushua told the disciples that he would make them fishers of men therefore with a net thrown in the sea as the nations the the fish of the sea get into the net as the ones that are chosen to be gathered with the Almighty in the other interpretation which I have heard even from Jewish people um, the fact that internet is called a net so that because we know that Yahweh knows everything from the beginning till the end even before time existed he knew everything that would happen how it would happen and therefore everything that was written is not only um, 
taking what happened in the beginning but also taking what would happen in the end therefore the fact that we we call now the internet internet is a worldwide web and he's saying wherever they go in the world i will spread my net on them and we know also that they call the cloud so he said that he would come in the clouds and spread his net on them that's why the last comes as the voice with a bow to throw the teaching through the net through the cloud hope that's understood and i repeat that's a valid interpretation and i have been surprised to even hear it from jewish people um and surprised mostly be, be, mostly because of the fact that they are a lot um they interpret a, everything through the letter so for them to get that interpretation actually believe it is interesting and nice wherever they go i will spread my net on them i will bring them down like birds of the air Yahweh in Psalm 110 told Yahushua, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies as your footstool. His enemies are Lucifer and the third of the angels who rebelled against him. So Yahweh is coming as the last, the second coming, to destroy and bring down Yahushua's enemies. So that's why Revelation 11, the two witnesses appear and are killed, resurrect, go up. Revelation 12, Michael brings down Satan. So, I will bring them down like birds of the air. Birds represent angels. Yahweh is saying that he will bring down the angels who have rebelled against him. I will bring them down like birds of the air. I will chastise them according to what their congregation has heard. That's amazing. According to what their congregation has heard. In Revelation, we see that when Yahweh sends a letter to to the seven congregations in Asia, he's sending it to the angel of the congregation. So Yahweh places an angel to take care of a congregation. That angel is connected with the pastor of the congregation. And through that angel comes the revelation that that pastor will give to the congregation. So people in those leaders, both the angels and the pastors or leaders, will be judge according to what they taught the congregation and if their teaching was a false doctrine obviously they will have a hard time they will be chastised as it is written here i will chastise them according to what their congregation has heard woe to them for they have fled from me Instead of fleeing from the abomination of desolation, as Yahushua said that people must do when it happens, they will flee from the abomination of desolation in order to get to Yahweh. Instead, people flee from Yahweh and go to the abomination of desolation, who they think is the Messiah, or Christ as they call him. Woe to them, for they have fled from me. Destruction to them because they have transgressed against me though i redeemed them that's amazing because we just saw in the beginning of the previous chapter that yahweh spoke about how he would come and die and resurrect after three days and then the same would happen to the people people would have to die through two thousand years and then be resurrected at the end of the two, those two thousand years and some of the people resurrected at the end of those three thousand years like the two resurrections that I already mentioned in the previous chapter and that we see in Revelation. So, woe to them for they have fled from me. Destruction to them, like the abomination of desolation, will desolate the whole earth. Because they have transgressed against me, though I redeemed them. Obviously, when Jewish people read this, they only think of the redemption of Egypt. But obviously, the redemption from sin is greater. And that is the redemption brought by Yahushua through his blood when he raised the cup of redemption and said, This is the blood of the new covenant, which is spilled for the many, which are represented by the name Ephraim. So, wherever they go, I will spread my net on them. I will bring them down like birds of the air. I will chastise them according to what their congregation has heard. Woe to them, for they have fled from me through those things they have heard. Destruction to them. For they worship dead instead of life. 
um, since Yahushua is the life, the false Messiah is death. So they worship death and therefore destruction to them. Because they have transgressed against me, though I redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. Yahushua said, I am the truth. So Yahushua is the truth and the word of Yahweh, as we're in, in Revelation 19, 13. So Yahushua is the word of Yahweh and the word of Yahweh is the truth. So they speak lies because they invoke the word of Satan, a different name. So through a different name, they invoke the word of a different one. And I wouldn't use the word one with Satan, but anyway, through the false name, they worship Satan. Because since the true name is the truth, the false name is a lie. So that's why it says... Though I redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. Not only, obviously, the pastors have been preaching lies for 2,000 years, which, if they are lies, they will be against Yahweh, for He is the truth. So, any lie is against Yahweh. With that clear, all falsehood taught from the pulpit is a rejection of Yahweh and His redemption, because they should teach what he taught and um, like I said the fact that even though Yahushua redeemed them they go and invoke Jesus so they speak lies against him because they say Jesus redeemed them when he was Yahushua but the name Jesus didn't even exist until the 17th century so obviously 2000 years ago there was nobody on earth called Jesus Yet they continued to lie, saying that Jesus saved them 2,000 years ago. But there was no Jesus on earth 2,000 years ago. Nor 19,000, nor 18,000, nor 30. Only a few, a very few uh, years, hundreds of years since that name exists. For the J didn't exist, I repeat, until the 17th century. So... Though I redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. They did not cry out to me with their heart, confirming what I was saying. They do not cry out to him. They cry out to a different one, who they call Elohim, or God, really. They did not cry out to me in their heart when they wailed upon their beds. They think they are crying out to him, but they are actually crying out to a different one when they follow a false doctrine and invoke a different name. They did not cry out to me with their heart when they wailed upon their beds. They assembled together for grain and new wine. They rebel, they rebel against me. The grain and the new wine, similar to the harvest, yet it shows that people, instead of preparing for the spiritual harvest, they prepare only for the physical harvest so that they can go and party and feast and get drunk and eat a lot they assemble together for grain and new wine not for Yahweh but for grain and new wine to eat and to drink and then it says they rebel they rebel against me others write they departed from me through that wine and it's called new wine in the sense that Yahushua brought the old wine the true wine in this context remember because when i speak of the first and the last i normally use old wine and new wine because the last appears as new and in a body that is made in the end times therefore new in regards to a body of 2000 years ago but in this context it's talking about how they through a new wine depart from yahweh therefore that new wine is a new doctrine as it is written that if anybody comes with a different doctrine than that which was taught by yahushua and the apostles that that be anathema or a curse let it be a curse it is written whoever appears with a different doctrine than that which is in scriptures so even though the last appears in a new body with a new revelation is all based in the true doctrine which is written in scriptures so what 
is new is the fact that is understandable I hope that's clear when Yahushua came he spoke not even his disciples understood then they would, they would ask and Yahushua would have to explain further then they received the Ruach and then still they didn't understand everything because they didn't understand that they still had 2,000 years to go even though they had Hosea 6 to read so the more time goes by and well for many reasons at the end times would be the time when Yahweh would reveal the most so the fact that that happens in this time appears to many to be something new yet it is of old but the false doctrine is new even though it comes from Babylon is new in the sense that it appeared when time was created while the true doctrine is eternal so even in that sense is new even if you say that it was created in Babel but even though it was created in Babel when Yahushua came 2000 years ago they adopted a bunch of truths from the scriptures from Yahushua and mixed them with lies so therefore the actual false doctrine that they have followed during the apostasy is a new wine and through that wine through that false doctrine they departed from Yahweh and that is as the new wine of the great harlot of Babylon which is actually idolatry once again so the idolatry that they fall in through following false doctrines and not only the idolatry of a crucifix or Mary but also idolatry of money and many other things that people worship in this world and even as Christians they assemble together for grain and new wine they reb they rebel against me though though uh, let me see I discipline and strengthen their arms or discipline and strengthen their arms yet they devise evil against me yet they devise evil against me even though Yahweh came to strengthen us through Mashiach because we can do all things in Yahushua who strengthens us and through his teaching made us disciples given us um, the way strengthen our path our steps so as disciples he gave us meaning um, um, I lost the word <laughs> he gave us the true teaching so that we may be in line so he gave us the true way and the strength then it says yet they devise evil against me so when he appears they devise how to kill them again even though he already gave them strength and the true discipline they return but not to the most high that is amazing they repent they do teshuvah they return but they return to the idol they return to the false doctrine they return but not to the most high they are like a treacherous bow like i was saying the last comes as a bow but those who reject him are like a treacherous bow as we see in genesis 49 those who have a bow the archers will hate the last and kill him so they return but not to the most high they are like tre a treacherous bow their princes shall fall by the sword like the second seal for the cursings of their tongue for the cursings of their tongue they don't know that they went when they invoke the false names when they invoke Satan they are cursing with their tongues instead of blessing for their for the cursing of their tongue this shall be their derision in the land of Egypt for they are in a spiritual Egypt nowadays as slaves to falsehood they shall be this shall be their derision in the land of Egypt the cursing of their tongue so through 
the fact that they kept cursing with their mouths thinking that they were blessed they were blessing they will eventually fall in shame they will be embarrassed in shame for having believed such a lie an obvious lie once you see it so the cursing of their tongue this shall be their derision in the land of egypt uh, we are near to finish that third day exact oh no the second day <laughs> we need to uh, we're close to finish the second day two thousand years and after the millennium would be the third day that's that's why i said that would be the second resurrection right before judgment day in revelation 20 so we are pretty close to revelation uh, well to start revelation 6 in a thousand years will be fulfilled in revelation 20. isaiah 48 8 it says uh prevaricator is it the same word in hebrew in hosha 7 1 let me see isaiah 40 48 8 Isaiah 48 8 says surely you did not hear surely you did not know surely from long ago your ear was not open for I knew that you would deal very treacherously and were called a transgressor from the womb we're called a transgressor from the womb yeah I don't know what were you saying that is similar from that verse but if that is the verse that you mean uh, no, it's not the same word for the word that I mentioned first is not found in this verse. Let's see another question. Nice, Uriel. It says here, why is the analogy made in verse 8 as if it were explaining to a cook? Why is the analogy made in verse 8 as if it were explaining to a cook? No, it is not explaining to a cook. It is referring, like I said, Satan as the cook cooking the people with leaven through the teachings that he reveals to his pastors who are the leaders of the many and uh, the explanation would be to somebody who can interpret scriptures so who can cook the interpretation that he is reading if in that sense <laughs> makes sense to you is it just a reference that the town is raw incomplete well, it wouldn't be the town, but the people, um, spiritually. And well, I, I'm not sure if you wrote that question a long time ago or you just wrote it. But I think with everything that I said, this question should be answered. So, um, when uh, I'm sure you will see it again, and then perhaps you will get the answer for it from what I already said. Is it more like first and last coming, both part of the cake? Okay, I get you. When it comes to that part, well, not... Um, no, not really, because it's a, it's a cake unturned, is what it said. And that is to show that it wasn't cooked right. That was the point of it. And the point of sending the first and the last would be to turn the cake and cook right the true doctrine. So, it's actually the opposite of it the fact that they only have one side instead of having both they're only cooked on one side because they only believe in one of the two first and last so actually that that i just said i had not said it first so <laughs> that is actually very important when we think about it. <laughs> that's why i tell you we surf the internet as a as the sea where the net is thrown to get the fish that's amazing <laughs> Omar says, does that mean that those that have called to the wrong name won't be resurrected until after the millennium? Does what mean? <laughs> because, well, you would have to send me the verse to actually get what you're trying to say. But if you're only talking about verse 1 of, of chapter 6 of Hosea, when we actually read the entire scriptures and everything regarding the first and second resurrection those who will be resurrected in the first one will actually be those who are in the end times so the many who are in the end times will be resurrected right away to be invited to the wedding because they died in such a horrible time and lived in the end times which are key 
and therefore also includes reincarnations as I have explained in previous studies but the rest of the people who were not part of those many were not part of the few obviously and lived throughout history in the different ages they will be resurrected until the end of the thousand years so for instance um, our great grandparents most likely according to this that I'm explaining will be resurrected at the end of the thousand years those who are alive now and will die during the last seven years of Daniel will be resurrected uh, those who are justified of course will be resurrected to be in the wedding of the Lamb as those who are invited if they are many or to be the the bride if they are the few uh, the dove symbolizes Ephraim the silly dove the dove symbolizes the Ruach but the fact that Ephraim has believed in a silly doctrine makes her or him a silly dove because of the Ruach that they have received which is silly makes no sense that's what uh, the scripture was saying they have no sense they have no heart for they are a silly dove they believe a silly doctrine which brings a silly spirit which is the spirit of error which made the apostasy what about those who get killed for a, the false name will they be resurrected in the first or the second resurrection if like well it's kind of like the same but well it's just one would have to see the the actual case and the person because some people have been killed not for the false name but because they were not wise they were silly doves they were not wise as serpents they were just silly doves so they were killed and there are some stories that could be in that category but some people who actually believed that that was the name and were willing to give their lives for that name would become martyrs because actually they are not being uh, killed by because of the name they are being killed because of the testimony and we see in revelation that there are two types of martyrs those who died for the testimony which is the preach the, the teaching that the son of the most high came and died for our sins and was resurrected by the power of Yahweh that is the testimony if they are killed for that they will enter as martyrs and they receive a body on the fifth seal unless they died after the first seal of course the fifth seal um, and the other ones are those who died for the name so some die for the testimony some die for the word and the word is the name so some die for having preached the testimony which those would be the martyrs within Chris, uh, Christianity and those who died for the name obviously also die for the testimony because those who have the name have the testimony unless they only are using the name for falsehood which uh, they are dying for other reasons I hope that's clear so if somebody gives their life for their testimony even though they had the wrong name that person is accepted as a martyr because they did give their life and they did not know the revelation of the name yet for it was for the end times as it was for the beginning of these 2000 years for Yahushua as we read in John 17 he came to teach the name reveal the name again just like Moshe had done it but then the Pharisees hid it then Yahushua came and uh, also taught it to his disciples and then he said that he would appear again to teach it again at the end of times that is in John 17 if you want to read it so hope that's clear